He would stop at a gas station and pick up a hitchhiker just to have someone to talk to. My Instagram handle changed to JT Fit now. What did you do in the army? Communications. That's why you're fat. Yep, there it is. If you got hairy nipples, it's a bad sight. Woke white women came in and just made it their thing. Like Planes aren't straight. They fly gay. I'm a true vet. I had a 420 credit score. I had a DD-214 and multiple divorces. I checked every block you need to check to be a veteran. (laughs) recording the that? lights are not correct right now what's the point of the lights if they're not correct what lights i don't know the light are the lights right are we on are we on the show is this we like, are this is like your 57th time in this room damn that's specific specific it's wrong but it's does close. specific start with a p or an s uh it's a ph okay uh i'm starting with a hoist because hoists are delicious and you know, recently I've become a fitness influencer. No, you haven't. Yes, I am. Have you? Did you not see my Instagram handle change to JT Fit now? <laughs> Is it? Yeah, JT Fit Mark Wahlberg Garage Gym. It's just all one word. JT Hard? JT. <laughs> I think I could be a fitness influencer. Why is it just you and me talking so far? Where the fuck is Caleb? Oh, Caleb is, uh, Caleb's in Colorado. Caleb's getting schmoozed, I think. Oh, well, good for him. Who's replacing Caleb? Oh, right. Well, right now it's uh, Mr. Danny Fer- Ferrar. Ferrar. Or like Ferrar. the drill sergeant used to say, Ferrari, whatever you call it. Ferrari? Him. Why weren't you at the f-ing gym this morning? I was uh, eating donuts. Why are you eating donuts? Because I'm a fat piece of shit. Are you tubby tubby? Fairy. I thought you were in the military at one time. The uh, world's well, greatest fighting force, the United States Army. Yikes. That's what you prefer to the best? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where I was at. What did you do in the Army? Uh, communications. That's why you're fat. That yep, makes there sense. it is. 100%. He was airborne, though. You were airborne He was 35th signal. He was in the 82nd, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Down so the street in a Drove down patch. our dens whenever yeah, it was drove, convenient. Drove 100%. down our dens. It was yeah. a different patch. Yeah. Different patch. Just different. screaming kitty, right? Possibly still under the 18th. I think that... Yeah, yeah. you're all under the 18th yeah, Airborne yeah. Corps. It's same, same. So you didn't get any any cue on the comms that we were coming in, we're going to get some workouts in. I mean, this motherfucker has no neck now. It's just all traps. Pectorals popping. That's true. You, your your shoulders are popping after. Look at him. A few days of him like, kicking your it's ass. It's like it's on a black rifle my, billboard. My whole body hurts right now. As it should. Your whole body could hurt. It hurts to look at. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially if you got hairy nipples. I don't know if you have hairy nipples. If you got hairy nipples, it's a bad sight. Listen. Yeah, it's not. Don't great. don't don't mind the brashness. You know, Danny's day consists of just moving steel from one point to the other. All just that's all he does. Yeah, like pocket yeah. Hercules. When you training with him, man, you gotta, the workout comes just from moving his weights. Then there's just a, the, the, there's it, a, a, a opening on his head where he just puts meat in there. It's all you need. <laughs> Is that, that your name, need. Pocket Hercules? What? Pocket Hercules? Pocket Hercules. It was actually, it was actually like a dude. It was a midget back that's in the passive, day. Aff- that's passively offensive. No, that was a midget. He was like legit a midget, and they called him Pocket Hercules because he got yoked by all he did was all day long was unrack the weights of all the bodybuilders and powerlifters, and that's how he got yoked up. So if you yeah, just come out- sounds like a job for like yeah. somebody on a pirate ship. 100%. Single leg. So okay. you're going to come in here. We're going to go get a workout right after this. I we'll train you, you right after fun. Yeah, yeah. y'all enjoy that. I'm you do the same about, workout Jerry did. I'm worried about your heart. Yeah. You got a heart condition? I, my, maybe. I should probably avoid the workouts just to be safe. Is it from the donuts? It's a contributor. I don't yes. think you have a heart condition. Maybe diabetes. Uh, no, I actually have blood work done. It's not diabetes yet. It's it's like pre-pre-diabetes. Pre-pre-pre. <laughs> it's borderline pre. I don't even know how diabetes works. Uh, which type are you talking about? I, One or two. I didn't even know there's... Different type. Type one, you have to get lucky. Type two means you earned it. <laughs> well, you know what type three is? Uh, type three is, I think, what they're saying Parkinson's is? Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, that's the one. Yep. I so might have it as well. You can give yourself diabetes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? Does he eat too much shit? Pure sugar for the most part. Sugar? So people that like candy? Yeah. I never understood people that like candy, dude. Like well, adults. What's nuts is it's literally a national security risk. Like 50% of this country will be obese by 2030. 50%. 50% half, of, the half of the country. Yeah. And they don't even call it uh, morbid obesity anymore because that hurt the fat people's feelings. So now they call it like, uh, I think it's like level three obesity because you just can't say that it's morbid. No, I mean, you can't. You can't say anything anymore, even if it involves like like the, the fact truth. that like 
you you could you could die. Like you can't even tell somebody they can't do something. Like it's like, hey, we we were talking about the whole fire academy thing. Like if a woman can't lift her own body weight, let alone with gear and equipment on, well then she probably shouldn't do that job. It has nothing to do with whether she's a woman or not. It has to do okay. with, with, with a black and white standard that says, hey, for you to survive this career path, you need to be here. And I've heard it's even worse in the police academies now because they're just like, you can't, you, can't get you have anybody. to pass everybody. Because, just because they don't have enough applicants. I got a buddy that was in, that's a cop in Maine and he was on the street as a police officer and didn't go through an academy. Mm. He didn't go through the academy, I think, until like 12 weeks after he'd already been patrolling. And I was like, how the hell does that work? And he's like, well, they, we don't have anybody up here. But you talk about like more like obesity and all of that shit. Six of the top 10 killers of Americans, the comorbidity is obesity. But everybody wants to turn it into big is beautiful and you can be healthy and big. It's just, there's no, no this is all just a lie. Yeah, it's 100% a lie. I mean, that's, I think that's what we chalk 2024 up to be is now you just lie 100 you don't have to you don't have to be true feelings truthful with anything who the hell is here it sounds like a large man does peter get out of his cage oh yeah that's right peter's here <laughs> never mind i'm like he's getting well, smarter I'm, you have to I'm, get a better lock i'm like uh, analyzing my brain right i'm like okay heather's out of town caleb's out of town jack's out of town who the fuck is in the garage right now <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's it. It's just, you, you don't even have to say things that are true. And if you just say them over and over and over again, then they just become true. Is that it? Like, I think at the end of the day, everybody, we got to a point where like folks were like, oh, bullying is bad. Uh, fuck, bullying has a place. I don't helps. care what anyone says. It's a growth tool. It is a growth tool. It can tool. be overused. I was a fat kid. I was 300 pounds at one point in time. Um, so I do have a level of empathy for people that have gotten overweight. And, and a lot of times that comes from people, they just failed to try to get traction and it never worked. But at the end of the day, like the bully at a young age actually is kind of like, it's the prequel to life. It's conflict resolution. It is. Dude. No matter what, like, and anybody that like, that is against this is like, just stop because you know what? In three humans ago, three generations ago, you could have gotten ransacked by a freaking Indian tribe and half yeah. of your town could have been killed. Like, I don't, I don't have time for these feelings. Like, like, oh, by the way, a six-year-old was like plowing a field yeah. and, <laughs> and had, to, had to procure, you know, food. Like, like, you had to go out and get your food. Like, and, and now that they was wear only three people ago. On a tricycle. By the way. Yeah. Like, you, you couldn't go to a store to buy food. <laughs> you know, one of the realest lines ever said in a movie was in The Matrix when he first talking to Neo and he's like, yo, we tried to make this shit utopia for y'all. Yeah, and it rejected And you rejected it. You couldn't accept it. And that's where we're at in America now where people have never, they haven't really addressed any real concern. Struggle. And so now we have to make shit up. Make up struggles. Because we want to overcome something. Right. And it's just dog, like you can literally door dash your food to you at this point. You don't even have to get out and walk to the grocery store anymore. No. And so that's why we're stuck in a place that we're at where feelings count over facts because nobody has any real bear in the woods to fight. Yeah, I watched uh I watched an interesting argument uh that was tell like like it was a, a, a I believe a British reporter and and some woman or whatever, but the woman kept telling the reporter that she goes by they and the reporter kept going yeah but I speak English and that's not proper English I'm not calling you that you are a single person you're you're a single female person so I'm not calling you that that's that's dumb I'm not I'm not changing facts because you're just telling me I have to in this moment and like that and it was funny because that the the fucking they idiot like had nothing to fucking had no defense to that. Was just like, uh, well, but this is what I, but this is what I identify as. And she goes, but I identify as somebody that uses the proper English language. Well, so which one what, takes weight over here? I think that's where it got crazy. Like, I don't give a shit if you identify as a tree, if you love animals, like what it is, but you- No, I kind of no do, dude. Like, I, I, I mean, if you truly believe that you're a tree, then you're sick. Like yeah. you're, there's something wrong with you. So it's like any of these 
fucking idiots out there that identify as whatever name, whatever the fuck it is that you want to like. Yeah. That, that's not a male or a female. If it's outside of that category, like you're either a fucking loony bins. Or B, you're just looking for attention. So there's only two possible fucking categories here. When you say, I'm a fucking cat, you're either crazy and we need to put you in an institution and remove you from society because you, thinking that you're a cat, offer nothing to, 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 to us like in, in a positive outlook. So go away. Or you're just seeking attention because... You're that uninteresting, that untalented, and that unmotivated to do anything yourself. I don't think anything's wrong with that. But for me, like, it's like, dude, long as you're not personally affecting me or mine, because I look at the way out the world, I look at it. I don't want anybody coming in and trying to tell me how to live my life or do what I'm going to do. But it's where I get upset is like, it's like, okay, I'm going to force this shit on you now. Like, you have to accept my worldview. And if you don't accept my worldview, you're somehow well, I'm, a bigot. I'm going, I'm... We're not there yet where I am in the conversation. I'm saying like like the the point of position saying of hey, if it doesn't affect me, well then you know, I'm okay with whatever you do. But 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 let's remove that. Now let's pretend this person that thinks they're a cat is the person that's in charge of your medical records or the person that's in charge of the DMV making sure that you, uh, you know, get your license you're tr and you're trying to, you've brought your paperwork and you're trying to obtain whatever it is that you're getting and they're meowing at you. That's a fair point. <laughs> That's a fair point. I mean, you like, look at it that way. Like, so it's like... I mean, we're kind of like, there though right now with the like, Secretary of Health and, and that whole nine yes, yards. it's loony. Yeah, and none of the like people that are in crazy. charge of health are healthy. None of them. No, they're like, not. None of them are in shape. You know, it's not like Tim there with yak muscles and, you know, eating a healthy diet. It's seven chins, long hair, and confused about who you are. Getting older and still wanting an active lifestyle are two things that don't always agree with each other. And one of my favorite products to help with that is collagen peptides made by our show's sponsor, Bubs. Bubs makes the best collagen on the planet that's responsible for recovery, joint health, and gut health. And heck, it even makes your hair look better. Bubs Naturals is a company formed in tribute to U.S. Navy SEAL Glenn Doherty, and 10% of all profits go to a charity in Glenn's honor. So check them out at bubsnaturals.com for all your collagen supplement needs, as well as their entire amazing product line. And don't forget, use code time 4 pi for 20% off your first order. It's, it, it, it's funny because I can't believe, like, out of everything that could that we could have evolved into in the in the last twenty years, like this is where we're at. Which but it's is the so shit that silly. was comedy eight to ten to twenty years ago. Like that shit is now reality. Think back to like Mash. I can't remember the character's name, but where he dressed up as a, a woman and he was in the thing. And now we literally have soldiers. I can't say I've seen in Marines as much as I hate to want to poke fun at them, but we have soldiers that are taking fucking pictures in their uniform wearing a dog mask. Yeah, no, that's not, it's not okay. Yeah. Like, like this shit is fucking rampant. It's yeah. dumb. And then Navy has like the <laughs> trans night where they're like doing, putting on trans shows on the, on the, on the damn ship and the whole nine yards. And it's like, how does that help mission readiness, preparedness at all? No. Even and, a little and, bit. And if you look at the contrary, like, like we never did this. It wasn't. It wasn't like you're excluding somebody. It's not like, oh, dude, the ship has had freaking straight night dancing fucking yeah. every Thursday for the last <laughs> two hundred years. But and then they're like left out because they're like, oh, you guys only do that. Like yeah. no, it's like why we didn't do any of it. So why why do we have to partake in this pendulum swing of like? I mean, I I just. Personally, like, I just think it's almost laughable uh, listening. Like, the, the trans community pretends that they were as oppressed as, like, the blacks yeah. and slaves in this country. And I think that's a slap in the fucking face to, yeah. to, that, to, to that, entire, that entire part of this culture is, like, to pretend that you were that, that you were on that level. It's like, yeah. no, just stop. Like, you know... Yes, there was, you know, when you really unpack it, yeah, the 80s, there was 
you know, a lot of a lot of bullying, a lot of hate. You had to be quiet about it. Like yeah. the '90s started to kind of shift. You know, late '90s, Ellen came out. Like then it kind of everyone just kind of just went, ah, what you know, whatever. Who cares? And then like late 2020s, it's like you go hard. No, we have to shove this down everybody every second of the day, blah, 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 blah. So it's just like, whatever, man. My breaking point for me personally is like, you know, I was I was molested as a kid. Like, I'm very, very protective about like anything around kids. Like, there's, you know, and I don't care. Like, be a freak all day long, but do what you do. But I don't like anything around kids. And so what always bugs me is when I see like these people like, and I'd be the same way if it was a straight stripper that was, you know, a 10. Like we don't need to be doing lap dances in front of kids. We, shit doesn't need to be at school. Well, the whole reading the kids thing is fucking dumb too. Like even if I'm just dressed like this and I'm like showing up at a elementary, like, hey, I really want to read to some kids. Yeah. Like well, people would be like, ah, That's a little you weird. know, but now I'm dressed in drag Hey, I really want to read to some kids. Like now it's like, oh, oh, thank God you're here. We're yeah. so happy. Like <laughs> it became a thing where they, uh, I forget which comedian said it. He was like, you know, we even go back to like BLM. And it was like, that was for African Americans for a whole 15 seconds. And then woke white women came in and just made it their yeah. thing. Like they were the most fucking oppressed humans that's ever been born. And it's like, like you said, man, like what you're saying happened just isn't it's just not true like nobody was going around rounding you up beating you up the whole nine yards <laughs> putting you in prison putting you in it wasn't like i ran where they throw you over a throw you right off the roof yeah. like as soon as possible like you're gone <laughs> you're done um so man things get serious when caleb's not here well, you know whatever why not? Like, <laughs> He's seen it in West Virginia, too. <laughs> yeah. We've gone like 57 episodes with just being silly and not yeah. saying anything. And now, like I said, I'm just like, dude, nothing to offer. Like, just. <laughs> I, I think it's a pendulum, though. Like, we're just with the one extreme of a swing. Yeah, but also, too, you know, you know what one thing is that nobody really takes into account and is the influence uh, from enemy countries that that could be pushing a lot of this. Like, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand, like, you know, the Chinese government has reporters, writers in, in the tens of thousands on payroll and are just, in, in our country, they're using our own First Amendment against us. Like, so, for example, I have, I have friends in the cyber warfare realm and, and, and they were explaining one thing for me, like, when the United States government came down or the DOD came down and officially uh, banned having any uh, rebel flag uh, visible as a sticker or on your truck or flying in base housing, like no more rebel flags. We're not doing that anymore. Um, for, for almost a month, there were 50,000 plus pieces of internet literature being published over that specific uh, stance, 25,000 was trying to defend, being able to continue to display the flag. 25,000 was ag against it, like, like, like you know, yeah. cheering for the fact that they did this, all of which this was coming out of China. Yeah. So they were, so they're flooding social media blogs and news with two polarizing points of view to, get you to keep people on one side and on the other to fight amongst each other. So it's like, what, how much is this influenced and, and fueled? Like, like maybe this, maybe that's why this thing has gassed up in the last like two, three years to an, a weird point. Uh, because maybe there's outside influence and maybe they're using that of like, hey, this is how we can keep red fighting blue is let's, let's, let's really put, put fuel on the trans conversation. Well, I got a guy that I serve with does kind of the same thing and he had said that pretty much identically the same thing like a couple years ago. He goes like, and he was even a step further, like a lot of these groups that come up that people join, they're groups that are literally started by other countries and they're ran by them and they keep people having those conversations and, and getting pissed off. But if you look at it in your regular life, I would challenge anybody. You just step back and do a self-reflection. Like 
How often do you talk about any of the shit that everyone's upset about? Like never. this shit never yeah. comes up no. in my life. I mean, it's- it's You're trying it's, to buy groceries, bro. Like, it's, it's, and that shit's expensive. Yeah. It's funny that like, it, it, it's almost like they found these really weird things to like keep everybody arguing. Like abortion is one of them. Like, oh, like that's such a weird yeah. thing. That's that, that's a main topic all the time. And it's like, yeah, you found these these things so all the politicians can do all their shady bullshit in the background and we're too busy arguing about <laughs> arguing about Roe versus Wade. Or- and to your point, the same shit's been happening literally since the dawn of man. Like yeah. there's been trans people, maybe not having the surgeries, but there's been trans people since the dawn of man. It wasn't an issue. You know, there's people been having abortions since the dawn of man. It wasn't an issue until right around election time and they'll pump it out, get everybody pissed off and focused when you can't afford childcare. Yeah. Ugh. Election years are always crazy. Like, even if the, like, the administration that's currently installed, I'm sure making tons of promises of what will happen if they get reelected. Motherfucker, you're already in the chair. What? Yeah. What What have you done? Why don't you do that now? The last like, four years. Like, it, everything's a what we're going to do. Not that's when a, Trump yes, did that mic dang, drop when he was debating Dangle the carrot. Yeah. And he was like, you could have changed the tax laws that you're bitching about me using friggin' all that time before. And you didn't do it. You've been, uh, what was she, the, she was the uh, senator for New York. Like, you didn't change anything, nothing. But that's why they don't want dudes getting worked out. That's why they don't want dudes getting jacked like Jared. Because if you're sitting around with low testosterone and you're not pumped up and you're not like, what's the likelihood that you're going to revolt over anything. a 50% gonna, tax? Yeah, you're not going to do shit. 100%. Um, how did you and I meet? Um, honestly, like it's crazy. I've reached out to you on a whim, uh, for our nonprofit and, and, you know, not going to give you fellatio here, but kudos to you, man. Like you were, um, you know, I was throwing, was that like nine o'clock at night too? Yeah. It was like, I was throwing darts at a ball at a board, you know, trying to raise money. Uh, I had a, I had a nonprofit. We opened the platoon veteran services center, which is out of Frederick, Maryland. And, you know, we were raising money and I was like, Hey man, what would it, what would it take for me to get you to come out and be our keynote offer to pay you and turned it down and you came out and gave a, a phenomenal presentation and uh, got the most expensive hat I've ever seen in my life. I think your hat went for 10 K that night, um, you know, and then what kind of like, hat was it? That sounds like a red hat. It was actually the hat they wore at the New York stock exchange. Yeah. It was the right? hat I wore when yep. the day that we went public. So I signed it and yep. they went auctioned for it for 10,000. And then you threw in extra another like 20,000 to get us like even, I mean, it was a phenomenal <laughs> night, man. It was like one of the best nights ever. And then, you know, I've obviously, like I said, in my, when I put on the post earlier, you know, I followed you. I've always been inspired by what you guys do. And I've always, honestly, always wanted to work with you. So this was kind of like putting in the universe until it happened. And then, you know, put a post out on social media about helping people get in shape. And honestly, I thought you were a bot when you first responded. I was like, man, did I just get botted? And, uh, <laughs> you know, no, I was like, hey, let's let's get after it and, and get to work. Top secret project. Yeah. That nobody can know we're about it. We're working on something with the, the DOD little, right now. Yeah, literally from the top. So... <laughs> You know, I mean, the good thing about it is, is getting to come out here. One of the reasons I'm pumped that you're doing it is because at the end of the day, you have a ton of influence. Uh, and I think a lot of guys, you know, on the veteran side of the house, like we have mission refit where we want to help guys get back into their uniform, right? And find that the pride that they had when they were lean, mean fighting machine. And I think a lot of people believe they can't do that. And it's just not true. I mean, the transformation you've done in four weeks time I mean, you know, I sent you the before and after of that yeah. time. And I mean, you're, you already look, already look Jack, bro. You know, so <laughs> it's 12 crazy. weeks from now, Four weeks. you're going to have a, you know, 12 weeks from now, we're going to have a Jared calendar. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Right? I don't have to Photoshop at this time. hundred percent. You're going to, what you're going to pose with the burger in your mouth and the cigarette in your ear. And then <laughs> you're like, what I didn't eat to get here. <laughs> do uh, do you still fit into your, uh, your military blouse? Not yet. There's How a far whole lot of chest you? bone in there though now. Yeah. Yeah. You're like a. You have more muscle than when you're in the military as well, but... Yeah. Hello, I'm a doctor with the VA, and we have implemented a series of tools to help veterans quit smoking. One of these methods we have created scientifically in a medical facility we call Hammer Hands. We call this method Slippy Fish, San Diego Comic-Con hand banana, cranking your brother's hog. We call this method Tortilla Throwdown, Portland Piper, and my personal favorite, the Angry First Sergeant. Really? Oh, God. No, that doesn't sound, there's nothing medical about that at all. 
What we're doing here is making fun of the VA for how absurd some of their suggestions have been to help veterans stop smoking. Which is why we urge you to go to smokelessvets.org and find real ways and real solutions to help you quit smoking. Like I, I have mine. Uh, my wife can wear it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I don't see myself fitting into a medium. Well, the last time soon. that I wore my service dress uniform was 2013. Right. And I, lo I lost it after that. I think I left it on a plane coming back from that trip. So I got a lot bigger from 2013 to like 18, like is when I like actually filled out. Like, so yeah. I went from 185, 190 to 220. So like, I'm going to have to buy a new uniform. Yeah, but you're going to look good at it. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to look like a straight like action hero in a disco <laughs> round. I mean, honestly, I have always thought about, I've come close to doing it multiple times, is I personally think the sexiest uniform that was ever made was the Army Pink and Greens. No, I'll, I'll debate. I'll go down. Yeah, the World War II. The best uniform yeah. that's ever been made. Like that's Marine why they Corps, went back to it. They went back to it. Mm. Had they stayed, had they went back to it, I would have re-enlisted just to get that <laughs> uniform. I'm not, I'm not even joking at all. Like they had that ugly ass a, uh, ACU, so it was easy to get out. But if those pink and green, those pink and greens would have been back there, I think they're the baddest uniform. And I've always thought about, man, ah, I'll just buy that uniform just to wear it one time because you get to blouse it with your. Well, no, boots. if you go over to to Normandy, like you can dress up. Oh my so you can you can just go back to. Bro, the World I didn't even War know that II. was an option. Yeah. I, I was like, I knew we weren't friends, but I was like, shit, like. Could he have thought of me when I saw the photos and everything post? Because that's like a dream, man. Dude, go. go there. Yeah, like, there's so many people that go every year. You tack on to a trip with everybody. Be like, oh, just show up. Like, that's wild. Fly to Paris, rent a car. And so they just have all the uniforms like, and stuff you, over dude, there? Dude, you, you, you can fly to Paris from BWI. It's freaking maybe eight hours, seven hours. Is that short? Yeah. Actually, yeah. It's probably only seven or six hours. Across? Hmm. No. Dude, it's from Atlanta. The Atlantic. From Atlanta, it was eight hours. From I Atlanta, not, I would Atlanta have is that. in. Like he is, he's up in. He would fly out of BWI, BWI yeah. to Paris, probably fucking seven, six. Yeah, you're right. They go up, bro. It's not straight. <laughs> it's not straight. <laughs> yeah, it's faster to, yeah. to like. Planes aren't straight. They fly gay. They fly <laughs> so gay. <laughs> All right, uh, so you win this one. ATL to Paris is an eight, eight hour, thirty minute flight. Yeah, that See, is way closer than I thought it was. Yeah, and I was in a middle seat too. Yeah. Yeah. A middle business class seat. No, I was in middle back of the bus on the way there because Jack booked my ticket. No. <laughs> Who was sitting beside you? Were there small people beside you? Uh, well, uh, Black Kevin was in, in my row, uh, and we had, um, I think, a Kuwaiti in between us. Oh, you had tons of room. Yeah, he was Kevin small. Kevin doesn't take up much. But he, he was small, but he moved around a lot. Like every 10 right minutes, there. he needed something out of another bag and something here. So it was just moving. Well, yeah, the blood doesn't flow in skinny people very well. They got to keep moving. But I, but I, uh, <laughs> is that what you tell yourself? I raw dog that flight. <laughs> they don't though. move in me either. <laughs> no headphones, no movie, no nothing. Just, just eight hours there. on purpose. You? Well, I just do that. Kevin, you got to ask Kevin about it. Like he's like, he was like, this is before the fucking memes came out. He goes, I was already like, why, why are you so weird? I wouldn't have thought for you would be able to just sit there for eight hours with no stimulation. <laughs> There's nothing about this week that has made me think that you could sit still with no stimulation. There's nothing <laughs> about the years, the decades that I've known you that say you can sit there with no it's stimulation. A plane, it's a plane seat. You used to pick up hitchhikers on long drives because it did. wasn't fucking 9 p.m. yet to use your phone. Yeah. What? I used to do that. So we lived in Pensacola. He would drive to Jacksonville to his parents' house every so often. And it was like iPhone 2 or 3 had just come out. So, like, you couldn't FaceTime. Minutes were still a chargeable thing before 9 p.m. He would stop at a gas station and pick up a hitchhiker just to have someone to talk to. You're bullshitting. And then he'd come back with, like, really fun stories. And then you were like, I do like to live friends. dangerously? Well, I mean, dude, I, I, I did learn a lot of shit about, like, one of the dudes I... I rode with, like, he had, like, every certification in, like, the trade world. And he had it in this, like, fucking, in his backpack in this binder. And he, like, so opened like it up. Nomad? He He opened it up, and he's like, here's my CDL. Here's my master electrician. Here's the plumbing. 
here's <laughs> here's welding. Like I'm like, well, what the fuck? He goes, I just roam around until I see cranes, and uh, you go to a city where there's cranes, which means there's work going on. And he goes, I. I'll roll up towards the end of the day and ask to speak to the foreman and tell him I'll work off the books for cash, you know, just running wire or whatever at night. And and they love it because it's like keeps the site secure and I get them ahead of schedule, you know. <laughs> it's wild though. Don't you ever think about how weird that is? That Well, not how weird it is, but how different people are. Like that guy's just like, all right, I'll just hitchhike around the world. I'll randomly find a job. I'll do something along those lines. And then there's other people like, dog, like I got to be home. By 5 p.m., everything's got to be done. I've got to have a plan for everything. And that dude is just like, wherever I pop up, I pop up. Yeah. He's like, I just look for cranes. <laughs> so why were you, where were you picking up hitchhikers at? Where were you going? I was just driving from just Anywhere Destin. on I-10 in Florida? Yeah, Destin to Jacksonville. I dropped him off at the Greyhound station in Jacksonville. Like you didn't have any reason to go in there? You just said, fuck, I'm just going to No, I was heading there to see my parents. Oh, okay. Like, but, you know, it's a long drive by yourself. <laughs> You couldn't find any friends to go with you? I don't know if I tried. Somebody jumps in and is like, aren't you worried I'm a serial killer? And you're like, what are the odds of two serial killers being well, yeah, in the exact I said, same I, car? I, I picked a dude up outside of Panama, and he was like, you're not worried? I go, no, you should be, man. I'm like, I'm fucking crazy as shit. <laughs> I picked you up. Like, that's like, and I got a lot of weapons in here that I know where they are, and you don't, so we're good. And he, he, had, been, he, had, he had spent a long time in prison, like 26 years. Uh, but like he just camps in the woods in Florida. Like, Is that like just the a woods. Florida thing? I like, guess. A, well, hitchhiking. What's the weather? Like, yeah. Like, so I don't, I mean, this is also like 12, 14 years ago. So like maybe it's a generational thing too, because I haven't seen a hitchhiker. Like, like if I think about it, like I have not seen a hitchhiker in fucking decade. <laughs> Like, no, no one's like walking out yeah, with like yeah, a thumb with up, the thumb like whichever, out, in, a, like, in a backpack on their back. <laughs> not at all. Like that's just not a thing in 2024. Maybe, uh, maybe they're all trans. <laughs> all the hitchhikers became trans. They, get, they it's a two person ride. <laughs> it's you a go two regardless. Person. So you got you to. Do they get to, do they have to pay more when they get in Ubers? <laughs> do they have to pay for plural people? Because you're two people. Yeah, they pick up. It's weird. I mean, if I was an Uber driver, I'd charge that. Hundred percent. You're two personalities. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> so tell us about Platoon 22. Like, cause that's what I, I went up to Frederick. We did your got your gala was beautiful. Like, and it was sold out too. Like that was awesome. Everybody there was super pumped about it and everybody dressed up. I didn't get yeah. that memo. Remember? Yeah. You, but you came in stylish. Not really. I like you guys were good. all black tie dresses. It, like it we looked, showed up like it was a beach party. But you were authentic. That's what everyone <laughs> thought. Whenever anybody does that, they're like, he's so authentic. He's just, he's the real him. I don't want to have his level of freedom, you know? <laughs> But yeah, man, I mean, Platoon 22 was a, a nonprofit. We started, um, yeah, we started that probably a little bit after, probably a couple years after we started Soldier Fit. And the whole point of it was honestly just giving back, uh, trying to help veterans, you know? Uh, and it's one of the things, again, like that I like about all the stuff that you guys have done. It's, it's not the dysfunctional shit. And we've all got things, man. Everybody's got stuff that's messed up. You know, I had, like I said, I was molested as a kid. I ended up, you know, thinking I was, honestly, I barely graduated because of that type of shit. Like, I thought I was stupid most of my whole life. Spent eight years uh, in the Army as an infantry paratrooper. Uh, took the first team into the Pentagon on 9-11, so I responded to the Pentagon. I was at the Pentagon about an hour after the plane hit. Um, what they, what they have you do? So, <clears throat> I was actually stationed with the Old Guard at the time. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know is that the Old Guard's mission, and everybody knows about the uh, barrels in Arlington and all that yeah. shit, but what a lot of folks don't know is the mission is actually protection of the Capitol. Um, if anything were to go on and, and obviously something went on. Yeah. Um, and so we got there and the first thing we did was secure it. Um, so we secured it, set up parameters. And you guys day, have weapons? Yeah. Oh, wow. What's so crazy, man, is like I was up in, um, I was up in the off post room. I was a sergeant at the time and uh, I was getting dressed. We we're getting ready for a cordon for, I think like the Prince of Egypt or some shit. And one of my soldiers walked up and he goes, Hey man, a, a plane just hit the world trade center. And I didn't even think anything of it. I'm like, prop plane yeah that's like, what that's what i i thought too like my dad was reading the like inner the slow internet we had yeah. like he was like oh <laughs> plane hit a building in new york and you're like whoa shit that's weird and you're like yo like you like you gotta be like the worst pilot on earth like how do you hit one of the world's tallest buildings and so we go down to the cq area and uh we're all standing there waiting for the bus to come pick us up and we see the second plane hit 
And you're like instantly like everybody in the room's like, yo, this shit's an attack. Like this is coordinated. And you know, <clears throat> you, you sign, you go to the military to actually do shit and you're wanting to do shit, but you're like, man, this is up in New York. You know, what is this going to be down here? And then, man, it wasn't too long after somebody goes into a plane, just hit the Pentagon. And it was wild because we were the ready. We just happened to be the ready company. And it was like, all right, you're going upstairs, get out of your dress blues. You're getting in BDUs back then. And then you go to the arms room and you're getting issued weapons. Like it on, it was kind of what's trippy about it. It's like, I'm getting issued weapons to go on American soil. Yeah. And what, what I never forget about this is how, how messed up official comms were. Like there were people saying that the, the uh, White House had been hit. There were, I mean, there was comms coming over that there were car bombs going off in D.C. And you could see like, you know, fast movers up in the air. And then uh, they loaded us up on those uh, LMTVs and carried us around. And I'll never forget like coming around and like you could smell it before you, before you got there. And we came around that side and they said this, I don't know what this means, but they were like, of all the places it could have hit, it hit the right, the best part because that part had just been reinforced, whatever the hell that means. But I remember coming around and it looked like a dollhouse where it had sheared down. And I mean, there were the third floor, you could see, like it didn't even look like anything happened. It looked like it just kind of came down, desk was still there, chair was still there. And so we got down there and we got, you know, basically established a perimeter, um, secured it. And then uh, what's crazy is how fast it filled up. Like, I, as I go back, I still give money every chance I get now to the Salvation Army because what yeah. they did, they came in and, and how much they helped there. But then they had the, you know, the fences set up and then it was probably like a day after. I always tell people the scaredest I've ever been in my life was actually at the Pentagon. It wasn't in, it wasn't in combat. Like we were, it was so hot that we were like doing these rotations and everybody was uh, laying down because we were going in. All we had was like, we went in when we made entry into the Pentagon the first time, all we had was BDUs, one of these masks that they wore for COVID and some like concertina gloves. And that's what we went in to start like moving rubble and pulling people out with. But <clears throat> I looked up and an air raid siren went off and all the firefighters were on the roof, start like sliding down the aerial unit on the fire, on the fire truck. And, I've, if you've ever seen a school of fish or like a bunch of animals like f freak and move when a predator came, that's exactly what it looked like. We were a little bit elevated and I watched all of the personnel just in one movement whoosh, whoosh, and everybody went to the one exit that was there at the gate. And if you ever watch like Cedric Entertainer when he's like, pe people start running, like you don't even know what you're yeah, running for. You're, you're running, running too. Yeah, yeah. And like I was up running before I knew it and I'm like waiting for the Pentagon to like blow up and like get hit in the head with <laughs> rubble, but they had thought another plane was coming in, but it wasn't. Oh, shit. Damn, so you guys in there picking up, yeah, picking up rocks and, people. and cement and people. No, yeah, well, when we went in, they were like, hey, we're looking for a volunteer and you know, you're normally not supposed to volunteer yourself in the military, but... I mean, this was obviously like a major event. So I said, hey, you know, me and my guys will go. And we went in and I'll never forget the name of the first guy I found, Donald Simmons. They, they rolled him over. Um, they pulled, we went in, it was like an ATF, uh, well, it looked like a police, like you ever watch NCI, they had plaques and stuff because it was a crime scene. Um, and they rolled him over and pulled out his uh, driver's license and said his name. And then we had to put him up on the gurney and was carrying him out. And he was slick because of all of the stuff from where the fire department had put like that foam in. Yeah. And one of the times his hand rolled over and hit mine and I saw he had a wedding band on and I was like, dude, like that pissed me off. So that's when I volunteered to go overseas from there. <laughs> but for everybody that thinks it was a rocket, if your rocket comes with two turbine engines, seat belts, teddy bears, and people, then it was a rocket. Otherwise, <laughs> it was a fucking airplane, bro. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Turbine engine, yeah, seatbelts, teddy bears, and people. <laughs> when people are like, well, you know, people are like, well, they never know plane parts. Bullshit. Like, we pulled we pulled guard on the plane parts. They moved them out and put them in one of the parking lots over on the backside. So, yeah, it's it was 100% an airplane. You were right there, dude. Yeah, right there. And then and uh, the government didn't set me up with big money to pay you that. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm still... Yeah, you're still jiving it yeah, with your gyms. I'm still, co I'm still covering <laughs> childcare, bro. Like, I got nothing. Uh, and so then after that, you went to, uh, went to Iraq. Yeah. Around the same time I was there. 
Yeah, I was. Up you there. were down. You were down south. I was up north. Yeah, well, I was out of Baghdad. I did a convoy escort for J three section for Minsticky. They were like a unit made specifically for uh, uh, training the Iraqis and uh, Iraqi army, Iraqi police, and so we did like a convoy escort for all their v- uh, VIPs. Um, <clears throat> you know, me and you were talking like. It, it's, I always tell people, man, it, it's weird. In a lot of ways, combat is a lot easier than the civilian world, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, you, you know what you're supposed to do. You know what everyone's job is. For the most part, you can count on everybody to actually do the job. They're pretty good at it. Yeah. They're like, really good at it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the 82nd is, I'll, I'll say this forever, forever, because I've served in so many different units as a TACP, like, the 82nd is fucking violent. Yes. And they are good at it. Like, the, the they're, it's, it, there's no comparison either. And, I, and I'm not talking, we're talking conventional forces now. I'm not in, including soft forces with this. But I have been with 1st Armor Division and, 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 you know, other infantry units out there. And things happen and they immediately retreat and like dude if somebody fucks with the 82nd they just multiply and then they and then it, now it's a game of well, like we're killing you Elgops. like <laughs> you remember the the rule of elgops right <laughs> where they say the rule of elgops is little groups of pissed off paratroopers and you know and the rule of elgops is is you you jumped in and the whole concept between them is you're going to be surrounded right yeah. like that's the whole concept yeah. you know what i'm saying and so like you just, what you get with the rule of Elgops is you get, you know, 20 to 30 heavily armed 18 to 19 year olds that are pissed off. They, all they can remember is the words of their platoon sergeant that said, go to the sound of gunfire and shoot every motherfucker that doesn't look like you. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty and they forward. live that up. Yeah. They've lived that up. Yeah, like, oh God, the stories like, like <laughs> that I have from them and even, even all my friends, you know, because I was in that unit for a long time that supported the whole division, you know, I've heard some great ones from Afghanistan. Like, <laughs> uh, how one one group lost a two forty. Like they had to they had to retreat off the hill and left the two forty, and 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 they came back with a whole company and like hunted these dudes down, Take killed it. them all, and took that two forty back. It's a very it's a very <laughs> special thing. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Yeah, I know. Right? But that was, but that that was it. Like like that was, there was a huge difference uh, from the striker units that I was in to some of the the just mechanized infantry and light infantry. That you you do one thing to to a platoon of the eighty second, and like now you just signed up, yeah. like because it ain't stopping until. <laughs> they're done. I think a lot of that stuff, like you would watch, you know, units over there that did convoy escort and they're setting down in the turret, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's like, like, dog, like you're, and you're, you're getting hit all the time. Why? Because you don't look like you're going to hit back. Yeah. Like we rode straight out of the the turret. turret. Yeah. hundred percent. And the turret was on a swivel. And so if you shot at us, you had a pretty good shot of chance that you were going to get hot shit back. And I think that's one of the reasons why we were, you know, we never lost anybody we were escorting. You know, unfortunately, the same can't be said for the uh, team. We took a direct hit on the uh, other side of uh, Fallujah on Wright, Michigan, lost Staff Sergeant Hernandez. Um, But, you know, it was everyone felt good riding with us. Everyone was safe, and that was the job. So worked out well on there. But honestly, I came out of the military. I transitioned like shit. I just, I wasn't prepared for the civilian world at all. Um, got fired from the first job I ever got outside the Army, which ironically was selling gym memberships. And now I own gyms. So never, <laughs> never let the first fire yeah, tell you you yeah. can't do it. But, um, you know, and just kind of like, <clears throat> I was lost for a long time, like coming out of that, not knowing what to do and went through, you know, I'm as... I'm a true vet. I had a 420 credit score. I had a DD-214 and multiple divorces. I checked every block you need to check to be a veteran. Um, <laughs> did you have a Mustang or a Camaro? I did have a Mustang, actually. Oh, there it uh, is. I did. There I did. it is. I didn't know that was one of the blocks, but now that you it's mention a, it. It's a Challenger or Charger now. Oh, my Lord. I did. I did. I did have a Mustang, but I couldn't afford a nice one, so I just got the base model. Damn right. Yeah, you know, but it was still a Mustang. Yeah, it was a V6, you know, but it got the job done. It came in. wasn't stick. Don't judge me. But it was, it was a us. So, you know, got, 
got fired, wound up evicted, wound up homeless, um, ate out of trash cans for a while, um, and then ultimately bottomed out and attempted suicide and spent three days locked up in the psych ward. And it was in the psych ward that I was like, man, I can be locked up for the rest of my life. And that honestly scared the shit out of me. Like I was like the concept of, you know, I heard the door click behind the orderly and was like, couldn't leave. And then that's where I first, you know, heard the concept of the Buffalo. And they talk about out in the Midwest, the way the storms come in, the storm can only go one way. And so when the cows see the storm come in, they do what instinctually makes sense. They turn and they run away from it. And cows are slow as shit and storm always catches them. And so they suffer until the storm is done. Buffalo, perhaps the most American of all animals, they're unique in the animal kingdom. They're the only animal that does this. When they see the storm coming, collectively as a group, they turn and they run right at it. And so Chief Woman Mankiller, that's, that's her name, uh, she said she embraces the buffalo mindset. And I decided to make that my mantra. And so we do everything head down, horns up. And so the big goal is I'll, I'll argue with everybody till I die on this. Fitness is the foundation. It is, it is the foundation. If you, oh, it's the first thing you learn in basic training? 100%. <laughs> you have 100% Make control. Make you strong. Yep, you have 100% control what you put in your mouth and 100% control what you do with your body, right? And what I try to tell people is like, listen, it's not about the six-pack. I don't give a shit about the six-pack. It's about capabilities. Like, if shit goes south, there's an image out there. And people got mad that I shared this image. I don't really give a shit, bro. There's an image out there. It might have been in Texas, actually. And this dude that's out of shape it's in a flood, and he's carrying the diaper bag. And some other, this guy's a police officer, a National Guardsman, I'm assuming, but he's a stud, he's in shape. That dude's carrying his wife and kids. I can tell you right now, ain't no other dude carrying my wife or kids out of harm's way <laughs> while I carried a purse. It ain't happening, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I don't give a shit, that dude's a hero. I don't care who it is. That's my job to protect. And so- people grossly underestimate like how much they could go and they think adrenaline is going to get them over it. When the truth is adrenaline is probably going to drop your ass within, you know, we talked about it yesterday, five punches, yeah. you're done. Yeah. So that's what we, that's what we push and, and go from that side point. And we, we use what we call the four by four framework. So if you're going to get life, the Jeeps have a saying like yours goes fast, but mine can go anywhere. So the goal of becoming exceptional isn't about speed, it's about not getting stuck. And so the four by four framework we put in where it's a, you know, the power four, getting up an hour earlier, 30 minutes of self-improvement every day, getting a little bit better than you were yesterday, proclamation, putting into the universe what it is that you wanna accomplish, and then journaling, get that shit out of your head. And then the four F-bombs, which are family, function, which is purpose, finances, um, and fitness. And so if you manage all of those things, then you're going to be, you're going to do well and be fine. But it all starts with fitness. Yeah, well, then how did your first gym come about? Man, when I first started, when I tell you I was laughed at to my face, like that's, that's not being figurative. I was literally laughed at to my face and said this wouldn't work. We started um, very first you know, message I always give to people that want to do things, you know, their own way. And they think other people is the better way. There was a gym, there was a training company called Eats, Elite Athletic Training Systems. And they were all college and professional athletes, looked like perfect humans. And I was like, if you're going to be successful, you got to be that way. And I tried that for a little while and didn't work. And then one day we were just like, you know what? Why don't we just do boot camp and call it Soldier Fit? And we're like, dude, that name's a gold mine. And for a while, like we literally used to wear like full, like, uh, ACUs, whole nine yards when we were doing the training, but you can't buy that for every employee. So that shit got discarded. But we started out in the field, man, just out in the field, running boot. And people would ride by and laugh and poke fun and, you know, whatever. I was, a, I was a joke of where I was at for a while. And then I went out one night. I did this fight and they didn't want me to fight the guy. Guy had lied about his fight, had seven fights, ends up being the head coach for the other team. And uh, Master Mike, former Marine who owned the place, said, I don't want you to fight. And I was like, listen, man, I was like, I can't promise you I'll win, but I promise I won't embarrass you. And I went out there and proceeded to get my ass whipped the entire fight and was about ready to black out. He had me in an arm triangle choke, and for some reason it popped into my head. He said, you, you promised him you wouldn't embarrass him. And I managed to get out of it, uh, escaped a couple more holes, and then cracked this guy one time and took his back with a few seconds left in the fight and choked him out. And Master Mike comes up to me afterwards, man. I tell people, you're interviewing every day, you just don't know it. And that fight was an interview for me. 
And Master Mike comes up to me afterwards and says, you won't quit. He's like, <laughs> would you like to bring your program to my gym? To this day, the highest award you can win in my company is the Master Mike Moses Inspiration Award. Because he opens his doors to me, man, doesn't charge me a dime for rent. And I've seen a lot of people that have been given opportunities and piss it away, and I wasn't going to be one of them. And so we went in there uh, and was training like on off hours. I was running at 8.30 p.m. at night class because that's when I could do it. And I walked out one day, and there was 30 people sitting outside waiting for class. And I was like, oh, shit, like we caught fire. And then, boom, we raced. And we built up on that organically till we could open our first gym. And then we just continued to do it since then. How many you got now? We got 10 gyms now. And then, so Soldier Fit is the brick and mortar gym. And then we have the Herd, which is our online uh, program. So now we train people literally all And that's And that, that's the thing I would get at. Like, like, you don't have to be local to you to get in on this program. Absolutely not. We have full app where all your programming, your meal plan comes through it. We have a complete accountability group. You get an assigned coach um, that is going to be checking on you, building your program. And that's what people really need. People talk about, like, what workout is the best workout. They all work. Every workout works. Every diet works. What throws people off is they don't have the accountability. And every night you put the old you on your nightstand before you go to bed and the old you is the first person that you wake up to and so if you've spent your whole life sleeping in well when that alarm goes off and it's uncomfortable the old you is just gonna say ah you know what we'll double up tomorrow ain't nobody ever doubled up tomorrow in their entire life <laughs> and so what i have found is that people quit on themselves but they don't quit on other people so if I tell you I'm going to do something, most people actually give a shit about honoring their word. So that's where the accountability makes the big difference is I've got somebody that said, I told them I was going to go get this done today. And so they show up. That's great. And where, yeah, where do people find that No. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Danny Farrar, uh, underscore the herd. You can find our website, soldierfit.com. Just soldier, soldierfit.com. Soldierfit.com. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cause I'm sure there's. There's some people out there that listen to us that are like, you know, maybe I want to try that. Well, they saw your traps today. <laughs> you saw their traps today. Like, yeah, I, I, I just want to if, thank if the, you. If the hot dog king can do it, well. Yeah, I just want to, I just want to thank you. Like when all of a sudden you become an international male model, right? I just want just, just, a, just a nice thank you card. Absolutely. Thank you're, you for you're the reason. Zoolander look, hundred <laughs> percent. The miracle work over here. Next, next, you're gonna turn your sights on Dave. I do. I do want to help you. I do want to help you. Uh, I, I'll accept help. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'll play the the role of the fat person here. Uh, I've been going to the gym, obviously not super successfully, for past couple years. Uh, but, like, the, the speed bumps, I guess, that you hit, first and foremost, is nutrition. Yep. Uh, and even though I know what I should and shouldn't eat, you run into the issue of convenience. Uh, so, like, if, if you want to get together after this and... What I want is just like a nutrition plan yeah. that isn't a pain in the dick to put together. And it's pretty, it's really simple. Yeah. Maybe we can share it with our audience as well if it's not yeah. like proprietary information. But no, 100%. Uh, nutrition is like the hardest thing. You, like you can, I can go kick my ass in the gym for as long as I want. And if I come home and, you know, fire up a microwave pizza, not a great idea. Well, the one thing I, you know, I will say to you on this is that where most people make a mistake with fitness, and I can say this with full confidence as somebody that used to be 300 pounds, people look at going to the gym as punishment for letting themselves go. Or they go to the gym with the concept, I'm going to justify eating like shit by going to the gym. Right. And it, it doesn't work like that. The biggest thing I recommend to people is eat more. I bet you don't eat enough. Willing to bet you money you don't eat enough. And that's the thing that shocks uh, most people, women and men alike, like they dramatically under eat. And then when they do eat, they eat like shit. And that's what holds most people back. Yeah. That sounds like, sounds and like cardio is not the thing to do body transformation. Like if you want to change the way you look, it's weightlifting is a hundred percent the way to go. And you look cooler weightlifting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like no chick has ever looked at the dude on the treadmill and was like, Oh my God, he's so good at running away like <laughs> they want to see like yo he picks up big shit and can crack skulls yeah i don't care that's, that's what i think that, that freaking sandbag out there. dude again old, like i consider myself decently strong I was big like, boy.com yeah here. i was like holy shit bro i was like are you building a sandbox in the back and you just need, didn't want to bring a truck and that's why you have them like they're, they're heavy as shit i mean he's training to break the record the Husafell stone record 
Really? Yeah, he wants to go to Iceland and no shit and and carry that rock further than anybody's ever carried it. Well, he's on a good pace because I looked at those bags. I was like, is, I was like, is, is like JT picking this shit up? No, like, is this what he's no, doing on the side man. of the day? I mean, those are like two fat people, like in one in one bag. Like, yeah. it, it's hard to pick it up. It's like four four fifteen or four twenty five. Jesus, and that's an odd lift. That's an odd four twenty five yeah. lift. Yeah, that is a that is a big person. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, uh, you know, you guys have survived today without taking your hands off the wheel of the car. So, I guess uh, if we get a little thumbs up in the chat, but also too, uh, comment below. You know, if you're interested in in looking at this, I'll I'll make sure Danny reads yeah. all those comments. Hundred uh, percent, uh, and he can get in touch with you. So, thanks for tuning in on this one. We'll, yeah, uh, let us know if you like these slightly more serious ones or if we should just tell more dick jokes for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Ha, ha, ha.